for introducing our next speaker. Last Thursday, I was very pleased to go to a dinner of an organization called the Bank Information Center, and it was a gathering of all of those representatives of all the groups fighting hard to relieve poverty in much of the rest of the world, especially Africa. And they particularly wanted to celebrate the anniversary of an amendment that was successfully authored by a then very junior member of the House of Representatives that mandated that in international financial institutions, due attention be paid to matters of the environment and human rights and decent standards for individuals. And we have come a long way there, and uh, that was then known as the Pelosi Amendment, because the author of it is now the speaker. She's continued that leadership, and I yield her one minute. General ladies recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I thank him for his kind words of recognition to the Pelosi Amendment, and I thank him for his tremendous leadership on debt forgiveness, not only now, but for a number of years. Uh, I remember uh, watching a master at work to see Mr. Frank work with the then Clinton administration in the year 2000 when we were trying to get the Millennium Debt Forgiveness. He, along with Congresswoman Maxine Waters, have really made a tremendous difference in all of this, and they have talked about some of uh, the differences made in the countries that Congresswoman Waters did earlier. God bless us in this House to, have, to be able to serve with, uh, with uh, Congressman Baucus. He's just been such a wonderful leader in the House, values-based policies sensitive to the needs of people in the world and how that relates to the security of our country and how this is important from a standpoint of security and compassion, but it makes good practical economic sense as well. You're a wonderful leader in this regard, and uh, it's an honor uh, to call you a uh, colleague. Uh, Spencer Baucus, a distinguished ranking member of the committee. And this has been a a bipartisan initiative from the start. I appreciate the letter that was sent out by Chairwoman Waters and Spencer Bacchus, Barney Frank, Ileana Ross Layton, Judy Briggert, um, uh, uh, the senior member of the Financial Services Committee, as well as Carolyn Maloney from that committee, advocating for this Jubilee Act to be passed today and spelling out exactly what it does, as Mr. Bacchus did so very clearly just a moment ago. Uh, so with all, the rec oh, and, uh, with all the recognition to those on the committee and those uh, who have worked on this issue, thank you for bringing us uh, to this moment on this day. And I was very pleased and accept Congresswoman Waters' um, acknowledgement of our insisting that it be brought up today, because today is uh, the day where uh, we welcomed uh, the Holy Father, uh, Pope Benedict, to Washington, D.C. Many of us have just returned from the White House where we were very proud of the welcoming ceremony presided over uh, by President Bush and Mrs. Bush uh, to welcome Pope Benedict and to be stirred by both of their words, the words of our President and also uh, of the Holy Father. And in his remarks, the Holy Father talked about, he talked about truth and justice and freedom. He talked about respecting the dignity and worth of every person, uh, regarding each other as brothers and sisters, all God's children. He made a beautiful and inspiring speech. And really, his speech was reflected in the remarks that Spencer Bacchus made here in that same regard as what our responsibilities are to our brothers and sisters. Today is the Holy Father's birthday. And he's spending, as the President said, he's spending his birthday with friends. And in friendship, we bring this Jubilee Act to the floor today. Not the first resolution to welcome His Holiness to America. Last week, we all voted in strong support in a bipartisan way for Congressman McCotter's resolution of welcome to the Holy Father. Yesterday, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren had legislation on the floor relating to uh, the religious workers visas and their ability uh, to work in the United States, which is an issue of importance uh, to, the, um, to, his hol uh, to His Holiness, and now today, this very important resolution. The uh, former uh, Holy Father, uh, John, uh, Pope Paul VI, he said, if you want peace, work for justice. This is, there's always been a connection here. With this debt forgiveness, it enables countries to do many more things to promote justice in their countries, whether it's the eradication of disease, the alleviation of poverty, eliminating some of the factors that contribute to the fury of despair that leads to violence that makes the world less safe. 
And this, uh, again, uh, John Paul II, uh, this was a high priority, uh, this uh, debt forgiveness for John Paul II when he was pope and he led uh, the cardinals in America in the uh, Conference of Bishops uh, to advocate for this. But it's not just been a Catholic initiative. It's, had, it's been an interfaith initiative in the country, in the world, and certainly in this Congress. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very exciting on this the, the Holy Father's birthday as we welcome him to America. We do so in a way, as, as Mr. Bach has said, it just gives the authority to negotiate for these um, um, improvements in the, the forgiveness of debt so that we can, again, uh, do what is right for uh, respecting the spark of divinity that exists in every person in the world, uh, is that we can try to bring some justice to it, we who have so much, for those who also God's children uh, need our help and uh, give them hope. And hope, people say to me, where is hope? I said, hope, it's right where it's always been. Hope sits right there comfortably between faith and charity. Uh, we are uh, people of faith who believe uh, in, in the goodness of people, uh, and we have faith that the charity that that will uh, evoke or bring forth will help um, uh, honor the hope that people have in the world. So this is a, a great occasion. It's, again, to welcome His Holiness, uh, to stand up for all the people in the world, and to do what he, he um, called us upon to do this morning. He called upon us to do. He said, we must have the courage. Today, I hope that we have a unanimous, bipartisan show of courage uh, to do what is right. And again, I thank Mr. Frank. Mr. Baucus, uh, Congressman Waters, for their relentlessness on this issue and the opportunity that they give us to give hope uh, today. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. Generally